The world is changing. From the polar vortex to record-setting heat waves and increasing flooding and wildfires, there's no question that Canadians must adapt and respond to a changing climate. Je crois que parce que on commence à en sentir les effets dans nos vies euh, au niveau des, des impacts des changements climatiques, parce que euh, certains des, des événements sont s'intensifient. À cause de ça, euh, la nécessité de d'agir euh, se fait sentir. Funded by Infrastructure Canada and launched in 2016, the five-year, $75 million Municipalities for Climate Innovation Program, or MSIP, has been delivered by the Federation of Canadian Municipalities. It's part of a global effort helping communities mitigate and adapt to the impacts of climate change. One of the most effective ways to begin is by incorporating a climate lens into municipal planning and decision-making. That idea of, of bringing a climate lens to decision making is, is something that's growing. Some communities are, are doing it systematically uh, now, uh, and more and more of them are, are wanting to take that approach. The journey to climate resilient communities is almost entirely influenced by municipal decision making and policy planning. Looking through a climate lens brings a focus on considerations such as greenhouse gas emissions and other climate-related impacts so stakeholders can collaborate on sustainable, cost-effective project plans. Infrastructure Canada uses that term, climate lens, for any big infrastructure project it funds. It has to go through a climate lens. So we're seeing it from that sense, but we also see it in council. And sometimes that means we're going to analyze the greenhouse gas emissions associated with this. Or sometimes this means we're going to assess, you know, is this decision making some people more vulnerable than others to the impacts of climate change? An effective municipal climate action plan has two key goals. First, mitigation work reduces a municipality's GHG emissions, improving residents' quality of life and saving operation and energy costs. Second, adaptation to extreme weather events is an essential part of building resilient communities, reducing vulnerabilities, and avoiding future climate-related costs. Adaptation is nothing new for many communities. So stormwater management, for example, it's something that communities have done for centuries in Canada. Um, they just, we haven't labeled it as an adaptive action. Municipalities are where the rubber hits the road, as they say, and that is certainly something that when it comes to climate change is how do we ensure that our municipality is as resilient as possible. With so many essential services provided to residents, municipalities directly control or influence over 50% of GHG emissions in Canada. The most equitable greenhouse gas reductions are going to come from those reductions in buildings and transportation and the fuel switching and electrification of buildings and transportation. That's all local and that's where that happens. Measuring and responding to local impacts of climate change means municipalities need to look beyond basic cost value economic assessment. A so-called triple bottom line also includes social and environmental outcomes. We focus a lot on the economic and the social and, and there you have the environmental benefits because when you're focusing on those two, you also then are generally getting the environmental benefits. Once residents and councils started seeing like, oh, our neighbors were flooded, 2,300 homes, you know, were flooded and things like that, it really get people talking. It's going to happen in our day-to-day -day lives. And so local government is best equipped to work with civil society uh, to, to tackle that. They have the most to lose. Um, they are the closest to the population. They've got a culture of learning from each other in collaboration. There's a wealth of expertise on local climate action in Canada, and there are many opportunities for collaboration with provincial and federal partners, similarly sized cities and regions, and regional advisors on climate action. Notre rôle en tant que conseillers régionaux, c'est un peu de pallier à ce manque de ressources là, euh, en, en fournissant au moins des outils qui peuvent être utilisés par les municipalités. This video series explores the tools, resources, case studies, partnerships, and funding available to Canadian municipalities for planning from resilience through implementation. So FCM is the voice of municipal government in Canada. In that context, we work on policy and government relations work to influence federal government decisions. We also deliver programs. In our programs, we do have some frameworks um, to help municipalities 
through their journey, and um, they're also uh, tied with resources to help uh, once you figure out what to do next, how to, to go about it. Throughout each video in the Climate in Focus series, look for this icon for resources that support the action steps needed on the journey to a climate resilient community. There's a future city that may indeed be led by my children, others' children, grandchildren, and they have asked us to be stewards of this place until such time that they can be leaders of it. I really think that if we don't do something now, that the future will look very different and that the future of my community will not be there because climate change is gonna force us out and I don't wanna see my community die. My daughter told me that she didn't wanna have kids and that, uh, that really surprised me. And I asked her why and she just said, I, I, cause I don't think it's fair to bring kids into a, a world that isn't safe. It's a fairly huge sign that things are not as they should be when um, when kids come to that conclusion about the state of the future. On a an obligation de utiliser notre temps quand élu pour avoir un effet pas uniquement pour la bonne gestion de notre communauté, mais aussi d'avoir une vision pour le long terme. On peut changer du monde. Euh, si on ne utilise pas cette occasion, ça pourrait être perçu comme une opportunité manquée. On n'a pas le choix. On n'a tout simplement pas le choix.